All right, welcome back. This is part two of our chapter five for chemistry for engineers at Southern Maine Community College with Jennifer Tremell. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. So we're just continuing with the uh, practice problems that we were working on before. And this is going to be a uh, slide 15 in your notes. Okay, and it tells us that a mixture has the mole fractions uh, that are given below, and that's in this this right here. Okay, so you'll have to write that down on your sheet. Um, if the desired pressure uh, is 750 torr, what should the partial pressure be for each gas? Um, and each gas will be held in a 15 liter vessel at 30 degrees Celsius. And we also want to know what the moles of each uh, gas or each substance are going to be needed for that. Okay, so let's see how we can put this together. So, and again, you have slides, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you have steps, I believe, on your sheet. Okay, and so step one is going to be to convert this here, the 750 torr to atmospheres, because we need um, atmospheres for working through the ideal gas law. So that's our step one. And it tells us that 750 torr, and so we divide that by 760 torr for atmosphere. And that is going to give us a pressure of 0 0.987 uh, atmospheres. And you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend like this already had a dot here because I wanna keep my three significant figures. You can't do that, but I can. <laughs> Later we'll have only two, uh, we'll actually have three significant figures here and I'll explain why in a bit. Okay, now our step two um, is going, you know what I'm gonna do as part of step one here, I'm actually going to uh, also convert our temperature here, okay? And that 30 degrees Celsius like this plus 273.15 is going to give us 303.15, which if we're working with significant figures because this is an adding and subtracting rule, this would give us 303 Kelvins, which gives us three significant figures there as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at our step two. And our step two uh, tells us that we need to find our partial pressure. Okay, so let's remember how to find partial pressures. And that is that the pressure of a gas is equal to its mole fraction times the total. means that for each one of these, first of all, the pressure of CH4 then is going to be uh, 0.865, yeah. <laughs> 0.865, there we go from here, times 0.987, which is going to give us 0.854 atmospheres. I am having trouble with writing the correct things here. Okay, atmospheres. And now let's look at CO2 right here. Here's that mole fraction for CO2. So the pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.029 times Again, our total pressure, 987, um, which gives us, uh, a, and here we can only have two significant figures, 0 0.029 atmospheres. That one actually isn't gonna change. Most of these aren't gonna change very much because we're um, pretty close to one. Okay, and then our next one right here, our ethane C2H6. So the pressure of our C2H6 or our ethane is 0 0.72 times 0 0.987, okay? And that will give us 0 0.071. So we're just, it's just slight changes here, atmospheres, okay? 
And last but not least, we have our propane at C3H8. And so the pressure of our propane is equal to point, oh, sorry. Look, I have a typo right here. That should be 072 above. Okay. And now the pressure of propane at 0 0.034 uh, times 0.987. And that one comes in at 0 0.034. Okay. So these are very close um, to what we had. Uh, and um, if this were farther away from one atmosphere, uh, then it would not be quite quite so close. Okay. Now we come to our step three in here. And our step three gives us uh, that we need to use our um, use the ideal gas law to solve for n. We'll come over here. And the ideal gas law again is PV equals nRT. And solving for N is a very common thing to have to do. N is equal to PV over RT, just like that, okay? And so we're going to do that for each one, okay? So first of all, the number of moles then of CH4 is going to be equal to our pressure, 0.854. Times 15 liters is our volume divided by R, 0 0.08206, and our temperature, which we have up here at 303 kelvins. Here I can have uh, three significant figures or a point, here, let me, here. So we have 0.854 times 15.0 divided by 0 0.08206, and 303. And this gives us 0 0.515 moles. And that's CH4. Okay, now let's find the moles of our carbon dioxide. Now these all just have two significant figures each. Um, and we have 0 0.029 times 15 divided by 0 0.08206 times 303. And this will give us 0 0.017, and that's moles of CO2. And now we'll look for our moles of ethane, C2H6. C2 and that will give us 0 0.071 times. So you can see there's a lot of similarities here because our R isn't changing, our liters aren't changing, our temperature isn't changing. So we work through that and it's exactly the same. And this one becomes 0 0.043 moles of our ethane, C2H6. And last but not least, we're going to find the moles of our propane, N of C3H8, okay? And that is 0 0.034 for our moles and everything else stays the same. Our 15, ooh, I'm running out of space here. Hopefully you guys have space on your sheet of paper. And, okay. And that will give us moles of propane of 0 0.021. See, this last step was exactly the same except for the moles. So for CH4, we had those moles. And then for CO2, we had the 0 0.029. And for C2H6, we had the 0 0.071. And then for our propane, we had 0.034, and the whole rest of e that problem was exactly the same for each one. So that is how you find the values um, for partial pressures and then for moles. And then you could continue with this to find grams if you wanted your mass.
Okay. Next, we have a slide 16. And the next two slides are going to be looking at gas stoichiometry. So gas stoichiometry is different if it is mass to volume or volume to mass. So make sure you isolate that on your, uh, your cheat sheet. So mass to volume gives you one set. And the equation that I have for mass to volume right here is that four moles of aluminum plus three moles of oxygen gas yields us two moles of aluminum oxide. So now let's take a look here. It says what volume of oxygen gas is needed to fully react 5.46 grams of aluminum at 1.16 and 21.2 degrees Celsius. So in mass to volume stoichiometry, we start with a mass of our given. And so our step one is to use stoichiometry to find the moles of our unknown. So we start out with 5.47, and I am having, there we go, 5.47 moles of aluminum. And now in stoichiometry, our next step would be the molar mass. Oops, sorry. Oh my goodness. I am making so many errors. That is not moles of aluminum. That is grams of aluminum. Okay. And then our first step here is to use our molar mass. And it's, it's just aluminum on the periodic table, which is 26.982 grams of aluminum per mole. Okay. And this is the molar mass of our given, just to review stoichiometry from the last couple chapters. And then the next thing that we need is a mole ratio because we're going to moles unknown and that gives us four moles, that should be an aluminum up there, four moles of aluminum on the bottom and we're going to what volume of oxygen gas. So this would be three moles of O2 on the top. And our next step here in this is the uh, mole ratio. We're done because all we want to do is find the moles of our unknown. So there's no need to continue this. And with three significant figures, what we'll get here is 0 0.152 moles of our oxygen gas. Now in step two, we're going to use the ideal gas to solve for volume. So uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is to do a couple of little conversions here. First of all, it tells us that we're at 21.2 degrees Celsius. So we're going to convert that to Kelvins. Okay, and get 294.35 Kelvins. And then we're using our ideal gas law. So PV is equal to NRT. We're solving this for V, which is going to give us NRT divided by our pressure P. And now what we can do is we can fill that in. So our volume, our moles are this value that we have here, 0.152 that we just found, times our R value, 0.08206 times the temperature that we just converted, 294.35. And we're gonna take all of that and we're going to divide it by our pressure, which is up here in the problem, 1.16 atmospheres. And we can have three significant figures in this as well. And we have 3.17 liters. And that is the volume of oxygen that we will need to fully react with 5.47 grams of aluminum. So now let's take a look at our next slide. Oh, that was slide 16. I can't remember what I wrote down, but this is slide 17. Okay. And now what we're doing is we are looking at the opposite gas stoichiometry where we start with a volume and find mass. So now what we're doing is we're considering our reaction. This is the Haber process. One mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen yields two moles of ammonia. And it's saying what, how many grams of ammonia will you make? So this is our unknown with 20 liters of nitrogen. Um, at 0 0.978 atmospheres and 5.77 degrees Celsius. So I'm not even going to 
do anything else, I'm going to start by converting my Celsius to 73.15. There we go. And just because I know that I'm going to need to do that. And so when I convert my Celsius, this becomes 278.92 Kelvins. Okay. And the first step here is to use the ideal gas law to find our number of moles. So if we have PV equals NRT, then we need to convert this. You've seen this before. N is equal to PV over RT. Okay. So it becomes 0.978. Times our volume of 20 liters. Divided by, and I'm going to go ahead and put this in parentheses for those of you with calculators that require it, our R value of 0 0.08206 times the temperature that we just converted of 278.92. And this is going to give us 0.855 moles of our nitrogen gas. Now, this is really important. This is moles of nitrogen just like our given, okay? So the next thing we'll need to do here is use stoichiometry to find the mass of our unknown. So remember that, so that's the mass of our ammonia. So this is, that's a little, uh, a little bit, we did different numbers of moles there. Okay, so we'll find, use this first piece that we just started, and we're gonna start with moles of N2. And when we start with moles, the next piece in there is going to be a mole ratio. So we don't need the molar mass of our given. We're going to go right to a mole ratio. And from above, we can see that we have one mole of N2. And we have two moles of NH3, our unknown. And the next piece here is going to be the molar mass of our unknown. Okay. And the molar mass of ammonia, you all know how to find this, is 17.031 grams of ammonia per mole. And I finished calculating this out, and I will get a final answer of 29.1 grams of ammonia, okay? So uh, gas stoichiometry is mostly only difficult because you need to decide if you're doing mass to volume or volume to mass. So just a little bit more, and then we will be done with chapter five. It's a reasonably short chapter. Uh, this is slide 18. And we're looking at standard temperature and pressure. Uh, standard temperature and pressure, or STP for any gas, is zero degrees Celsius, and or which is 273.15 Kelvins, and one atmosphere. So this is what you're going to use for temperature standard temp and pressure, and this is what you're going to use for your pressure. Okay. Well, please have for any mole of gas at STP, the standard molar volume is 22.41 liters. Excuse me. So what that means is that you can use this uh, conversion factor. 22.41 liters of any gas is equal to one mole. Or that one mole of any gas at STP is equal to 22.41 liters. So you have this molar volume ratio that you can use, but this is only at STP. We can only use it when we're at STP. If we're not at STP, we have to um, do a more extensive calculation. So let's take a look at how we will practice that with slide 19. And here what we have is we have carbon dioxide, so that's CO2, can be removed from a stream of gas 
by reacting it with calcium oxide uh, to form calcium carbonate. Okay, so first of all, that's calcium oxide is right here. And uh, calcium carbonate would be CaCO3. Okay, and what we want to know is what mass of calcium carbonate will form. Okay, so our first step here is going to be to start with a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so first of all, we have um, CO2 plus CaO yields CaCO3. And CO2 is a gas, and calcium oxide is a solid, and calcium carbonate is a solid. So it's important to note that the only thing that is going to work with gas laws here is the CO2. The rest of it, they're not gases. Okay. And this is balanced now. You can see that we have one calcium, one carbon, and three oxygens on each side. Okay. So now let's take a look at what we're working with. We can do this in two different methods, okay? Our, the first method that we're going to do is our volume, okay, so we'll call this method one. And method one is basically, this is a volume to mass stoichiometry problem. And if it is a volume to mass stoichiometry problem, then we can follow what we did before, okay? And just to isolate a couple of things here, it tells us that we have 5.5 liters of our CO2, okay? And we're at STP, so it's 273.15 kelvins, and it is exactly one atmosphere. Okay, and then we're looking for the mass of calcium carbonate. So let's go ahead and start with method number one, volume to mass stoichiometry. So first of all, in volume to mass stoichiometry, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to solve for the moles of our known. Okay, and NCO2 is equal to our pressure, which is one atmosphere, times our volume, which is 5.5 liters divided by our R value, 0 0.08206, times our temperature, 273.15. And that will give us 0 0.245 moles of CO2. And then step two in volume to mass stoichiometry is to do stoichiometry with our moles here. So I just like to kind of continue here, okay? And so our mole ratio is one mole of CO2 to one mole in this case of CaCO3. And then we need a molar mass of our CaCO3. And we find that one mole of calcium carbonate has 100.086 grams in it. And that will give us a final answer with this method of 24.5 grams of calcium carbonate. This method works all the time, regardless of whether or not you're at STP. But because we're at STP, we can do a little bit of a truncated version and that's where we're going to use the molar volume conversion factor. And in that case, and you can use either one of these methods. Method one is great. Um, for my general chemistry students who have a little less math skills, um, so I usually what I do is I only teach them method one because they've already learned it. Want, here would be method two. And again, this only works at STP. And with this, we begin with our given 5.5 liters of CO2, okay, times our molar volume, 22.41 liters of CO2 for mol uh, one mole of CO2. And next would be our mole ratio.
And this part is the same as in the problem above. And then we need um, the molar mass of our unknown or our calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And we had already found that of 100.086. If you work through perfectly, then you're not you're not rounding for moles in the middle and you'll probably get a slightly more accurate value, but you know, you're, you're using other vet things. So that's okay. It's 24.6 grams of calcium carbonate. Okay. So there you go. And again, that's only at STP. If you don't want to use the second method, you don't ever have to. All right. We just have two more slides. Congratulations. Okay, so in this next one, we are looking at slide 20, and this is our kinetic molecular theory of gases. So let's take a look at some of this. Uh, first of all, gases are made up of large collections of particles, which are in constant random motion, okay? So that's the big thing. Gases do not stop moving, okay? When they stop moving, it's because they've become a liquid. Gas particles are infinitely small and occupy negligible volume. And that's that Avogadro's law there that basically says we don't care how big our gas particles are. Okay. These particles move straight lines, except when they collide with other particles or with the container walls. These collisions are elastic, which means that if this is our container, that they bounce off. Bounce, 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 okay? So the kinetic energy of the particles is conserved. They don't lose anything uh, due to frictional heating or something like that. So, um, and that's different from if you had a bouncy ball, no matter how bouncy your bouncing ball was, it would, oh, it would over time, it would lose its ability to bounce back and forward unless you were in a vacuum. The next part of the molecular theory is that particles interact with each other only when collisions occur. They're, that means that they neither attract nor repel each other. Okay. And the average kinetic energy of a gas is proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas, but does not depend upon the identity of the gas. So what that means is that your kinetic energy of the gas increases as your temperature increases. And we're going to work with that more when we talk about thermochemistry. Last slide here, we have uh, slide 21, and we're going to be learning about root mean square velocity of gases. Um, this is gas velocity or the velocity of gas particles. And here we have a brand new R value because we're looking at energy, 8.3145 joule per Kelvin mole. So you might also see this is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin is usually how this is written. Okay, and just to remember here that a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. We'll use that again when we're using thermochemistry and energy, but you've probably seen it hopefully in your physics classes at this point. Because of this, our T is our temperature of the gas in Kelvins. And super, super important, M is going to be the molar mass of our gas in kilograms. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And here is your equation. Hopefully you can see that. It is that the root mean square velocity is the square root of three RT over M. Just in case, I don't think that's covered up, but I'm gonna go ahead and write it again right here so that you can see it. I usually will just do RMSV is equal to the square root and sometimes it's helpful to see this in parentheses, 3RT over M. And remember that M has to be in kilograms. Okay, so let's take a look at the root mean square velocity of helium at 25 degrees Celsius. So first of all, always, 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 we're gonna convert our temperature, okay? 
You've probably gotten pretty good at doing that right away. Okay, and that will give you 298.15 Kelvins. Okay, and now we need to find M. Okay, so we look at our periodic table and the molar mass of helium is equal to 4.0026 grams per mole. Okay, if this wasn't helium, if it was so something like carbon dioxide, then you would have to calculate that molar mass. But we need to convert this to kilograms. So we have 0 0.40026 grams, and there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram, which means that this gives us 0 0.0040026, and that's kilograms per mole. Okay, and finally, we can do our, our calculation here. So here's our thing, and we have, again, some calculators are gonna want this part to be in parentheses. We have three times our new R value, 8.3145, times the temperature that we converted, 298.15, divided by our molar mass in kilograms, so that's 0 0.004, 0026. Hmm. And we square root that and we get 1,363 meters per second. And that is the velocity of helium at 25 degrees Celsius. That concludes our chapter five and gases. I will see you in class.